And I'm your friend to the end. Heidi ho <laughs> My memory of Child's Play, going to see Child's Play, was just, was just such a great character in a movie. Chucky was just the beginning of Kevin's animatronic work. This was an important film for him. It was beyond me. <laughs> I got a call from David Kirshner. I had just finished uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, I think. And uh, he, there was an animatronic head in that that I had done. Again, it was just a simple, had just some simple cables that, you know, moved Freddy's eyelids and, and his, his brows and cheeks and mouth and, and stuff like that, and that was it. So he looked at that, and uh, I came recommended by uh, Rick Baker, who had uh, won the Academy Award recently for um, American Wealth in London. Kevin, I think, was, was younger than, than I. I think Kevin was 24 and was beginning to establish himself as the go-to guy for this kind of thing, and, and he certainly did. I think this helped as well as Freddy with the beginning of, of his career, that he was the guy that did both of those. It really wasn't any training for Child's Play. Animatronics was very young. It was in an infancy stage. There'd only be a few shows that even used animatronics. And the word animatronics comes from Walt Disney, from their, uh, you know, work on the amusement parks, you know, the, the uh, robots. And we just took that and started using it in film. We just had nothing to go, oh, it'll be like this, or oh, we'll build it like that, like this one show that we did before. So it was kind of frightening at first to start from ground zero and build up from there. The look of Chucky, this physical characteristic, I wrote that very, in a lot of detail. Two feet tall, red hair, blue eyes, freckles, overalls. All of that could describe a million different things. Now, David is a very talented artist and had created a line of dolls. I did a drawing of the good guy doll and then another version of the malevolent Chucky. Kevin took that element and built Chucky from it. Start with the drawing. And you're not hindered by the fact that you know it's gonna be mechanized. You just make a sculpture. He used to bring a clay model of Chucky's head in to show uh, Tom Holland, uh, David Kirshner, and, and everybody else. It was a big table of, you know, the art department was there, the you know, wardrobe people, everybody was there. And I had to present the, you know, the Chucky head, and it was made out of this uh, stuff called Roma clay, and it's green and dark and kind of dull. So the sculpture then becomes what the skin will eventually be, which means you have to make a mold of that face. And when you have a negative mold of that, that's what you put the fiberglass in. And that, of course, if you're following the process, gives you a hard plastic fiberglass core. You put the mechanisms in this fiberglass skin. I saw the understructure for Chucky, and there were a number of mechanisms for subtle things happening in the face. In one head, it could look sweet, and then, and then it could instantly get angry and you know and those little tiny features would suddenly become devilish there's one puppeteer that just does the eyes his job is to blink them move them left and right up and down all that stuff and that's it and you've got a guy that does the brows and the cheeks you have another guy that just does the mouth so he's doing the jaw with a mechanism that goes on his head maggie yeah Ant maggie Ant maggie they put an l-shaped bracket in the jaw so do that movement. This is the most uh, intricate head. Uh, we've put a test skin on it for now, just to have some no. flesh tone on it. Uh, hey Amen. Man. So we could practice with it. It's probably one of the most difficult things because Steve's got to coordinate nah, jaw nah. movement with lip movement to get him to pronounce A E I O U and a all the vowels. And e I O U. And then he, he moves the lips with little joysticks with his fingers. <gasps> So there's three people that just work Chucky's face. <laughs> did I get you wet? I seem to recall that what Kevin did with Chucky was there was a kind of a developmental stage of it's a doll at first and then it kind of became progressively a bit more human. But I think what that does is psychologically as an audience, you start to believe that it's a bit more alive. The doll slowly begins to change. It becomes more human. So the, the skin quality had to change. It had to go from shiny plastic 
uh, toy-like into more fleshy-looking, more human. It had to get have little moles and freckles on it. His eyes got deeper. The eyes went from that sweet kind of sparkling blue to almost this uh, translucent blue, and Kevin came up with that. Brad has great piercing blue eyes, so we wanted to replicate that. They immediately almost suggest something evil because you can almost see through uh, the blue. We even talked about putting beard shadow on him, but we decided against that, you know, go mustache or something, but we, we opted not to do that. It follows the line of thinking that we teach the special makeup effects students. What do I need to see to make me believe that what I'm seeing is really happening? So if you can give life to this piece of rubber, the impression of life is there. Within the makeup effects world, there is kind of a, a community of, of artists that are constantly kind of pushing the envelope for the majority of things. So you, you do different techniques. I remember being in Kevin's shop and being impressed by the work that was there. And I remember him showing us the, um, the walking Chucky. We had a servo puppet. And what I mean by that is it's a little tiny motors that people use in uh, radio controlled hobby cars or uh, boats or planes. We take those little motors and we put them inside, you know, the body. Today, if we're building any kind of uh, animatronic character and it has a flaw in it, you know that the digital guy can come back later and fix it. Back in the 80s, there was nothing like that. So everything had to be perfect because it couldn't be fixed by CGI. We were nervous the first two weeks, but after the guys got a little relaxed, they begin to goof off and begin to kind of do things on the fly. They could come up with spontaneous moves. And if Tom Holland was watching a rehearsal and he saw something that they did on almost like as an accident, he would say, hey, repeat that, do that again. It was tough. I think I was calm or maybe appeared calm because I was just scared shitless. <laughs> Chucky, what do you think? In the animatronic movement, again, perfectly suited because it's a doll, so you can have a kind of a, you know, 80s animatronic style to it. You mean I have to live out the rest of my life in this body? Then we had a all-cable Chucky, bicycle cabled, so that, you know, with joysticks are connected to, you know, cables that go to elbows and everything like that. It was completely cable from head to toe. Rod Puppet Chucky, one guy that, again, that held the body, you know, he supported the doll as well, so he did the head and the body. And he had the two arm guys, so there was, he was like a half puppet. We also had a screaming, kicking, self-contained, flailing Chucky, and we put a drill motor inside of his body, and it was all self-contained and that would move his legs, basically like a screaming little child having a fit on the floor. That's how that one worked. Now, if you were gonna use a little person as an actor in a costume for certain shots, then you have to do a life cast of that actor and then take all of your physical attributes of what the outer character is and make a costume. I thought that the uh, uh, moments with the uh, little person in the costume and overscale sets to make it the right size were great because it really kind of opened it up and suddenly there's this thing, you know, running and scrambling. Great use of uh, mixed bag approach. The value of having physical pieces in front of actors is quite important and many directors still value that. It was really a fun process and even fun to discuss it now as to what we tried to do to bring Chucky from this very gentle form to something that would truly terrify people 20 years later. So long, John. 